Hello, family, and welcome back to another episode of the Organize My Thoughts podcast. I am your host, Kyla Jackson. I'm an execution strategist helping you to get out of your head and find your focus so you can execute your business ideas. In today's episode, we're going to be revisiting a former episode called Developing Patience Under Pressure. This is a episode that is crucial for this time, again, as we're coming towards the end of the year, and you may be feeling a lot of pressure to get a lot of things done, to maybe even move ahead of God because you feel like he's taking too long. And so this message is definitely for you if you can relate to any one of those scenarios. And just a great reminder that God exists outside of time and time has to bow to him. Wherever God promised to help you, whatever solution that you are waiting on, it's in God's hands. And even when it looks like you're running out of time, you're not because again, you serve the one who who holds time in his hands. And it's a big perspective shift to have when, again, you feel like, you know, the world is on your shoulders and everything is of high importance and decisions need to be made now. But this episode really holds a great perspective and some strategy that you can use to really find some peace, even in the midst of what looks like chaos. It helps you to release control, even when it feels like that's the scariest thing that you can do in this season. So I hope you all enjoy this episode. Definitely don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating for this podcast. I love you all so much. And let's get into the episode. Your list family, and welcome back to another episode of the Organize My Dots podcast. I hope you all are having an amazing week. Now, y'all know how my week is going if you've been on my email list because I have just been opening up and being very transparent about the season that God has me in. Right now, we're in a two-part series. Last week's episode was called Developing Patience When You Don't Have Any. And child, when I tell you that message was just as much for me as it was for y'all. Now, last week, I talked about patience under the lens of trying to move ahead of God's timing and be in control. And I talked about how God has this beautiful, amazing promise or promises that he's planning and orchestrating in the background. And because we don't necessarily see the fruit that we want to see and the timing that we want to see it, then we start moving a little hasty. We start letting anxiousness and fear drive us into places and with people that God did not ordain. And we really wind up making a big mess that we then have to take back to God so that he can make it all right and put us back on the path. I also talked about how moving ahead of God's timing makes us vulnerable to counterfeits. And that is a very dangerous place because counterfeits can lead you off of the path. They can cause delays in your walk. And then ultimately they can open up this big can of worms that you now have to spend even more time in the presence of God to get rid of those things and to be pruned of those things. And so if you haven't already checked out last week's episode, definitely go back and listen. But let's get into today's episode. So again, today is part two. And the title of today's episode is Developing Patience Under Pressure. I'm going to say it again because that title is good. We're talking about developing patience under pressure. Now, let me go ahead and give y'all the backstory so y'all can see how we got to this point. So recently, God has had me doing something very uncomfortable, something that is stretching me, and it involves like planning an event. Now, I'm a planner. I'm an over planner. I'm like type A perfectionist type planner. So when it comes to doing things God's way, It requires a whole nother level of submission for me. And when I tell y'all it's been a process, it has been a process. One of the things that has made this so challenging is the timeline in which God has given me to do it. Now, this is something that I've been seeking God about all year long and I haven't, you know, heard any response from him or receive any further direction. Now, in the past, I've tried to do things on my own and try to move ahead and only to end up irritated, disappointed, and with a big mess on my hands. So in this season, I'm really trying to 
slow down and make sure that I'm moving at God's pace. I'm realizing that just because I don't have all the information that I feel like I need at the time doesn't mean that I can go ahead and start just making things happen, especially because this is a God event. Like I have to be so careful. And so, like I was saying, the deadline for this event is really tight. And I have been seeking God all year about the location and the details. And I had the entire vision, but it's just now it's time to execute on those steps. And I need to be able to hear God each step of the way. So right now I was seeking God for the venue and I kept asking like over and over again, and I was not hearing anything. But what was getting me was the fact that God was answering other things that I had been asking him. So I copped a whole attitude because I was like, God, this is a pressing item that you have told me to do. Like you laid out the blueprint. This is your vision. You put it on my heart to do this. And I don't understand why you're not giving me the answer to this question, but you're addressing every single other area in my life, which was completely, for me, irrelevant to the task at hand. And I come to a whole attitude with God to the point where we was really, I mean, it was really me arguing. He wasn't really saying nothing back because he usually just lets me have my tantrums and my fits. But I was really upset to the point where I was like, I don't even want to talk about this no more, y'all. I was so stressed out that like I could feel anxiety in my body. Like my body was getting hot. I was getting headaches. I would try to sit down and do a task and I couldn't focus. I was getting very irritated and agitated. I was even so stressed out that I started pulling my eyelashes out. Now, if y'all know, my eyelashes are very long. I have extensions and I love them so much. But when I get stressed out, I start to twist on them and I just be pulling them out like that is how stressed out I was because I was just like God like I need to tell the people where it is I need to release it save the day like I needed to do all of these things and at that point I was just over it so I got to this point where I'm on the floor I'm crying I'm literally like God what else do you want from me like I have done everything that you have asked me to do I have been obedient. I am seeking you. I'm being still and I am so frustrated. And I was talking to him and I was like, why does it seem like every time you have me do something, it's always a toil with it or it's always all these hoops I have to jump through. And after I began crying and just letting it all out afterwards, I was like, what do you want from me? And he told me that he wanted me to release my expectation of his timing. And it took me a minute to realize what he was saying until I really started just being even more still, because at that point, I really had nothing else to say. And I was in a position where all I could do was listen. So the longer that I sat there, he told me that my expectation of when he will give me instructions of when he will do something or when something is going to happen is causing a strain in our relationship. And that really broke my heart because my relationship with God is really important to me. I hold it near and dear to my heart and I'm always making sure that he is first in my life. So when something is a strain and especially hearing God say that that is a barrier, that there's a barrier between you and him, like that is really disheartening for me. And so I really had to sit back and do some reflecting because I'm like, okay, why do I feel like I need to have this information right now. Mind you, there was so much pressure on me because this is a an event, so it requires a lot of moving pieces. The timeline is really tight. And so I was really feeling that pressure. And I couldn't understand, like, if it's important to you, God, and it's important to me, like, why won't you just release the information? And then I realized that this the withholding of the information wasn't to cause harm to me or try to frustrate me. It was God revealing to me an idol that I had in my heart, which was my expectation of timing. That was the idol. I allowed the demands and the pressure of the assignment to cause me to forget that God is a God of detail. And it's weird to me because it's like I had forgotten so quickly 
who God was in the midst of my emotions. And I had just talked about that on the previous episode. Like God was just dealing with me about how he's a God of detailed instructions and he has the whole roadmap. But how quickly did I forget that as soon as I allowed anxiety and my expectation of my timing to run me? And the more I think about it, I'm like, man, when I allow my emotions to drive me, it's like all of my studying, all of the things that I've been meditating on. It's like they went right out the window. And so now I really understand why God says to lean not on your own understanding, because the moment that you lean into your understanding, which is your emotions and your interpretation of why something is happening it will leave you all over the place. Like you will become double-minded. That anxiety will begin to take over your body and you will forget everything that God taught you. And so I really had to be still. I had to sit in God's presence and just listen. And it was so frustrating, y'all, because I felt like, it's like I, my mind was so focused on getting the information that I needed so I could experience some relief from the pressure that it's like I was really fighting on being still with God. And so finally, after a couple of hours, honestly, of just sitting there, I told God, I said, OK, God, at first, I remembered who he was and I said out loud, I said, God, you are a God of detail. You are a God of detail instructions. You tell me when to go left and right. You're the one who gave Moses the blueprint for the tabernacle. You are the one who gave Noah the blueprint to build the ark. You are the one who spoke to Ananias and Saul at the same time. Like I had to remember who he was because I had forgotten in the midst of my emotions. And once I remember that and I said, God, you are the God who was more than able to give me the next step. You are the God who has already written out my story and you know my present moment. You know what chapter I'm on right now. So because of that, God, I surrender my emotions to you. I surrender when I feel like I should have this information. And God, I just trust you. And when I tell you, like, it's like the weights were lifted off of my shoulders in that moment, because I'm like, God, I have no choice but to trust you. And sometimes God puts us in those positions where we have no choice but to trust him. Faith is not supposed to be convenient because God uses obedience to test what's in your heart. He uses it to see if you have any idols. He uses it to increase your patience, increase your endurance and all of these other things. And so when I released it, I was like, okay, God, like it just is what it is. Sometimes you just have to get in the mindset. It is what it is. When God decides to give me my next step, it will be in right timing. It'll be the perfect timing because even if it's late on my end, God is always on time. And when you surrender to his timeline, you surrender to his will, it just takes off all of that ungodly pressure that is on your shoulders. And really that's what anxiety is in that particular form is when fear and pressure are driving your decision makings and they're really clouding it. All of that, whenever you start to feel pressured or rushed or all of those things, that is not God. If you study Jesus in the Bible, Jesus was never in a rush for anything. When Mary and Martha called on Jesus to tell him that his friend Lazarus was sick, Jesus waited like four days to even go up there to help him. He was not in a rush. And this is somebody that he loved. Okay. And so when he got there, he performed the miracle, all of those things, but he was never in a rush to do anything. So whenever you're feeling pressure or feeling rushed, that is not God. You may have a tight deadline. You may have a million and one people waiting on you to make a decision, but God is not in a rush and you shouldn't be either. And I know that is a stinger if you were anything like me where you just want control of everything you want everything to work out the way that you feel like it should this is a stretching process trust me I really feel like that that moment kind of broke me it broke that habit of making hasty decisions right off of me and it was so necessary and that skill of being able to be still and wait for God 
is the key skill that you're going to need in order to be able to walk this walk with him. Through this process, I learned that I can't be married to the usual way of doing things. Like it doesn't matter how many people planned events before and all the different blueprint. When God is telling you to do something, he's going to tell you to do something completely different. And people may not understand. People may be trying to rush you, but it doesn't matter because you are on God's timeline. And when you move ahead of that, you're automatically setting yourself up for failure. It just is what it is. And I'm going to confirm that to you um, in First Samuel chapter 13, when it talks about Saul's disobedience. And this was something where Saul was under so much pressure you guys like he and his troops were in the middle of a battle with the Philistines and it looked like the Philistines were winning they pretty much had them cornered to the point where his troops were hiding in rocks and cisterns and in caves because they were so afraid and so at this point Saul is watching his men tremble in fear and they are slipping away like they are pretty much ducking it because they just don't understand how they're going to win and so Saul is in this position where he's being obedient. He's waiting on Samuel. And at the seventh day, Samuel does not come. And so Saul, under all this pressure, decides to sacrifice the burnt offering anyway to God. And y'all know what's crazy. Right after he sacrificed the burnt offering to God, Samuel shows up. And Samuel is so upset because he's like, what have you done? Like, why did you disobey the Lord? And so Saul starts to explain how he saw everybody was running and they were dipping and they had, he had all this pressure on him. So he just decided that it was time for him to go ahead and sacrifice the offering. And Samuel was like, no, like God told you to wait. Like you are now being disobedient. And because of that, because of his rebellion, God decided to take away Saul's kingship. And so he had already started looking for his replacement, which was David. And so while we may feel like Saul may have had the rights to go ahead and move forward because he was under pressure, God is like, I did not tell you to do that. Like, I see the amount of pressure that you're under. I see everything that you're facing. But obedience is more important than sacrifice. And we see this popular scripture all the time. And this is where the context comes from. At that time, the sacrifice was a way to seek the Lord's blessing before the Israelite army went to battle. It was also going to help the soldiers to dedicate themselves to the Lord and strengthen their faith. But Saul was so consumed by the pressure of everything else going around him. He was so distracted by his emotions, the anxiety, the fear, and what he saw in the natural that he was disobedient and he moved ahead of God's timing. Saul wasn't even authorized to give the sacrifice in the first place. And so you can see how his emotions and what he saw caused him to lose sight and then act out of impulse. Yes, the sacrifice was important, but it was not more important than Saul being obedient to God. And the same thing goes for us. God is not impressed by what you produce without him. He's impressed by your obedience and your willingness to wait on him, even in the midst of pressure. When it seems like everybody else around you is waiting on you to make a decision, when it seems like your tasks are piling up and everything is due at the same time, will you wait on God to make your next move or will you allow your impatience to drive you into disobedience? Another word for patience is endurance. Endurance is the ability to bear an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. You have to be able to endure through all of your emotions, through all of the voices that are telling you that you need to be doing something. You need to be able to navigate and sit still, even in the midst of all the pressure going on around you. You have to be able to get to the point where you are going to say, I'm not moving until God tells me to. So if that means you need to turn down your plate and fast so that you can kill your flesh, which is trying to get you to move ahead of God's timing. If this means you need to drown out all the outside voices, whether it be social media or the people that you've been talking to it about, Whatever you need to do to get still in the presence of the Lord, you have to do that. 
And another thing that I want to mention is when I was going through this process of waiting on God and being really frustrated, I noticed that a spirit of confusion entered into my life. I had heard God say a specific date. And so because I was waiting and I was in a state of desperation, really, for instructions from God, the enemy capitalized on that desperation and he started saying things to me that were not even relevant to what God was trying to tell me. And so what I mean by that is I was told a date by God. And so because the timeline was so tight for what God needed me to do, in my mind, I felt like I needed more time. And so the enemy used that and he started telling me, oh, you need to push it back to this date, right? And at the same time, I also knew the general area that the event was going to be in. But because, again, I was in a state of desperation for this specific location, the enemy decided to whisper in my ear that the event was going to be in a completely different state. Now, I did not recognize this initially as a spirit of confusion. But when I was talking to wise counsel about it, the Lord revealed it through them. But I could also, looking back, see how my body was reacting, right? God is not the author of confusion. You may not know exactly what your next move is, but when God is speaking, he makes it very clear. And what the enemy will try to do is come in and say things to confuse you and make you double minded so that you actually don't do what it is that God has told you to do. And so for me, it was extra important that I was really still and I focus on the first thing that God said to me. A principle that I've been following that has really helped me to be obedient and consistent in my walk with God is usually the first thing that I hear is God's instruction. The second thing that I hear is the enemy coming in and trying to confuse me or question what God said. And then the third thing that I hear is usually my own thoughts where I'm battling with whether or not I heard God correctly or just all of these scattered thoughts. So keep that in mind if you're also experiencing that, well, I just don't know what to do or you feel like you're in that paralyzed state. Be still, focus on the information that God has already given you and then wait for further instruction. So I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I just want to leave you with a scripture that I always remind myself of when I'm waiting on God or when I'm growing impatient. And it's James uh, chapter one, verse four. It says, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God's whole thing is to continuously perfect you. And although sometimes this perfecting process can be painful, it can be frustrating. At the end of the day, God is not trying to harm you. He's trying to produce something in you. He's trying to help you to birth something. And so don't allow your impatience to drive you. Wait on God. He knows what you need before you even need it. So you're just going to have to trust him. This wraps up another episode of the Organize My Thoughts podcast. If you found this episode helpful, please share it with a friend who you know needs it. You never know what this type of information could do for somebody. You never know what people are praying for. So definitely share it with your friend. Text them the link. And I will talk to you guys on the next episode.